Welcome to this Manimo online training. In this training we will talk about Manimo finite element modeling. In the Manimo solver we have two uh, modules, one being the multi-body module and one the finite element module. The module uh, for multi-body uh, is mostly used for modeling articulated body systems, uh, something like vehicle suspensions, mechanisms, seat belt retractors, etc. Whereas the finite element module is used to model the deformation of structures. Uh, that can be structural or interior parts of the vehicles, or also uh, restraint systems like seat belt webbing, airbag fabric, etc. Some finite element applications that are typically modeled with Marimo are uh, vehicle structures for pedestrian modeling, front-end vehicle structures, and uh, restraint systems such as here shown airbag models, but also finite element belt models. The whole concept of finite element modeling is dealing with splitting up uh, a solid structure in small elements, and each element is connected uh, uh, with nodes to uh, the other elements, and the nodal displacements uh, model the deformation of the finite element structure. The idea is that nodal displacements are transferred to element strains. This depends on the property of an element. In this slide you see property membrane translating the nodal displacements into a strain formulation and an element strain. Next, the material model determines how the strain is transferred into a stress. The stresses are calculated in the integration points. With the stresses being calculated, again the property, uh, property of the element can be used to transfer it back into nodal forces. The spatial discretization of the solid structures uh, depends on the nature of the structure. If you have a volumetric structure, uh, you can use uh, tetrahedral elements or hexahedral elements to split up your stru structure in elements. For more planar shapes, you can use triangular or quadrangular elements to split up the structure. And these can then have a, a shell or a membrane property depending on whether they can resist bending easily or not. If you have a long profile or a tube structure uh, with bending resistance, you can use beam elements. And finally, for a string type of uh, structures, you can use truss elements. When using the finite element method, you have to take care of your time step, your integration time step. For finite elements, we have the courant criterion determining the stable, uh, critical stable time step for an element. The courant criterion uh, can be calculated as shown on the slide, and it uh, depends on the stiffness, the density, and the element length. As in Manimo we have both multi-body and finite element in one solver, we can model interactions between multi-body and finite element. And typically, inter typically the interactions are uh, supporting FE nodes to multi-body models, you can support them to reference space, but also to multi-body models that can move in your multi-body system. For that you can use a support or a state FE model if you switch to a rigid FE model. And also there is a support restraint. A second way of interaction between the multi-body module and the finite element module is connecting the FE structure with multi-body kinematic joints or with dynamic restraint models to a multi-body structure. For um, the connections um, for the joints can be either between two FE structures or between an FE structure and a multi-body body. A third way of modeling interactions between multi-body and finite element is contacts. Uh, where you can have contacts inside your multi-body system, MB and B contacts, you can have contacts inside your FE parts, FE, FE contacts. But you can also have contacts between multi-body surfaces, planes, ellipsoids, or cylinders on one hand, and finite element nodes on the other hand. 
when modeling both with multi-body and finite elements, we de we're dealing with two integration methods and two integration time steps. For multi-body, we have the Euler method, but we also have the options for Runge-Kutta integration methods. For finite elements, the central difference method is used. By the way, this is all explicit integration methods. When having both finite elements and multi-body in the same model, we normally use an Euler integration method for the multi-body system. With different time steps, there is a possibility of having sub-cycling between finite elements with respect to multi-body modeling. Although this is possible, it is strongly discouraged and we always recommend to use the same multi-body time step as the critical FE time step or small is used in your model. Some uh, elements in Mardimo that can control your FE model settings. First we have control FE model. Inside this element you can define Rayleigh damping, whereas normally Rayleigh damping can have a, a parameter linked to the mass as well as a parameter linked to the stiffness. In Marimo we only have the mass uh, linked parameter alpha. That's why it's also often called alpha damping. Another uh, parameter that you can set under control of e-model is the mass lumping method. There's uh, two options for this, geometrical and work equivalence where uh, we normally uh, stick to the geometrical option. Another parameter uh, inside the FE model, uh, another element, is called control FE time step. In this element we, can, we have several parameters that determine the finite element time step that is calculated with. We have the time integration method, we have the reduction factor, the reduction factor is basically a safety factor on your critical time step. We have the attribute number of cycles. Number of cycles uh, can be put to zero or to one. When put to zero, you're calculating with a constant FE time step. When putting to one, it means that during every time step, the critical time step is determined first and your time step can actually vary over your simulation. The min step and the max step parameters determine the range that you allow your time step to vary in. So it can, for instance, have a max step of 1 e minus 5 seconds and a min step of 1 e minus 6 seconds, meaning together with a number of cycles of 1, that your time step can effectively vary between 1 e minus 5 and 1 e minus 6. And finally, we have a limit step. A limit step is a, a, an often much smaller time step that you put, that you will say if my critical time step comes beyond this time step, I will abort my simulation. This ends uh, the first section of the finite element part. Thank you for your attention.